Hey guys, Cyber Aquarius here bringing you another video. Well, it's getting to be that time of year again when our aquarium thermometers are on the rise. And I'm going to share with you a very cost effective and efficient means that I'm using to cool my 38 gallon reef aquarium. But before I get into that, I wanted to share a quick story with you. A few weeks ago, my wife and I were uh, going out of town for half a day. And to save a few dollars, my wife decided to turn the air conditioning to 80 degrees. I live here in Georgia, and it gets rather warm uh, early on in the year. And when we returned to home that evening, my house was at 80 degrees. And, you know, she didn't tell me about it, and I knew there was going to be problems. So I came in here and you know, did an inspection on both aquariums. And in the reef tank, the temperature was at 85 degrees. So, you know, quick, quickly I turned the air back down to 75 and I started doing a visual inspection of all the inhabitants and my Helfrici firefish, this guy here in the front, he had the first signs of ick. He had uh, several, several spots on his uh, caudal fin and down the length of his body, he had, you know, multiple spots. And guys, this brings me to a good point uh, you know, a lot of times whenever we see a, a symptom of an illness, you know, we grab our bottles of med medication and start dumping them in the aquarium. But actually the best thing you can do, uh, first off, is to, to correct the cause of the problem. So I immediately got my temperature back around 78, so 79 degrees. And the next day, this guy, he had no more ick. And this has been three weeks ago, still no more signs of ick. But so anyway, um, so I had to start looking at, you know, ways to, to cool the aquarium, you know, the most cost effective and uh, efficient way, you know, obviously a chiller is very expensive and I would need a 1 15th horsepower chiller to, uh, you know, to cool this 38 gallon aquarium. Sorry about that guys. My camera just died on me, but, um, I was talking about chillers and chillers, you know, like I said, are, are very expensive and they take up a lot of room and they're also noisy you may need a chiller depending on your situation if you have very intense metal halide or hqi lighting or vho t5s you know with a lot of uh, wave makers uh, you know within the aquarium that produce heat it may be that you have to get a chiller but before you spend a lot of money on a chiller you know just observe your situation and know you know just how high your temperature is rising and what I'm using is evaporative cooling to cool my aquarium and it's actually dropped the temperature as much as seven degrees so far. I'm gonna take your top side here in a minute and show you all the components. But I did let the house purposely get back up to 80 degrees and my temperature maintained 78 degrees. I know it would have been 85 degrees as it was when my wife, you know, let the house get up to 80 before so it was able to keep it seven degrees cooler than what it would have been so i'm gonna go ahead and take your top side now and show you guys all the components that i'm using for my uh for my evaporative cooling all right so before i run you through the components i'm using how does evaporative cooling work well it's quite simple the thermal energy that's stored in the water is used up in the process of evaporation. So basically, as the thermal energy is being used, your water temperature will be lowered. Now, the drawback is that your evaporation rate will be increased. So if you're using evaporative cooling on a freshwater aquarium, simply adding a reverse osmosis, RODI, deionized water, or distilled water on a daily basis will be sufficient to keep up with the rate of evaporation. But if you're uh, using it on a saltwater aquarium, I highly recommend an auto top-off system just to keep your salinity more stable. Now, in order to, to use evaporative cooling, you need to push air across the water surface. So you're going to need a fan, and you're going to have to have that air come in contact with the water surface. So if you have a glass canopy, you won't be able to use this method unless you have a sump. You could mount fans on the top of your sump, you know, blowing across the surface of the water in your sump. But you can't uh, obviously just run an open top aquarium if you have fish that jump. Some people 
you know, don't have to worry about that, but I do because some of my fish are jumpers. So uh, I had to construct a mesh top out of some parts that I bought at my local uh, hardware store. This is basically a, a window screen frame. I picked up a seven foot stick at Home Depot for around five or six dollars. And then I had to buy some spline to fit in the channel to hold the, the mesh screen in. That was a couple dollars. And then these little L brackets, th those were a couple dollars. I think all in all I spent $15 for the kit. But I did have to buy this uh, clear plastic mesh netting at Bulk Reef Supply. And I bought the smallest piece that they had, which is a three foot by seven foot piece for $11. So all in all, I spent $26 on the screen top. And uh, I didn't spend any money on the fan, which I'll get into that here in a second. But Bulk Reef Supply sells a kit to make these screen tops. And I think the cheapest kit is $37. And I, I paid $25 for mine. As far as the fan, uh, there are many options available to you. You can simply go to Walmart and get a desktop fan. Uh, they're quite bulky and they're loud. And uh, also there are some aquarium specific fans. They're not that expensive, but I found them to be you know, quite loud just from you know, watching some of the, the fans on YouTube and some of the customer reviews. But what I've done here is I've used a four inch CPU fan that I pulled out of an old desktop computer that was just sitting down in my basement. And this, this uh, fan here is extremely quiet. You can never hear it when it kicks on or, or turns off. So you can't even hear it. And uh, I pulled up the model number of this fan on Google and it actually pushes 22 and a half cubic feet of air per minute. So keep that in mind guys, uh, 22 and a half cubic foot of air per minute has been able to lower my water's temperature up to seven degrees on a 38 gallon aquarium. So you'll have to do some experimenting, you know, based on the size of your aquarium. But I had to make a few modifications to the fan. It didn't have an AC adapter, so I took a cell phone charger plug and I soldered it on to the wiring and I simply used some heat shrink to keep that uh, connection, you know, clean and dry. Uh, I used this plastic uh, clamp with some uh, rubber pads on the plastic uh, uh, contact areas, you know, just to make sure that it didn't scratch up the glass and so it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't uh, turn on me. And I simply used a coat hanger. I had to drill, I had to dremel out this little slot here to keep the, you know, the coat hanger from going up and down. And you know, simply zip tie the wire and the coat hanger together. And you know, it's just, you, you can come up with any way that you uh, can dream up of, of mounting your fan. But that's how I did it. Uh, you know, for a more clean installation, you could use some uh, electrical conduit and put the wires together, run some conduit over that. But um, it's been doing a great job of keeping my aquarium cool. Um, you can plug your fan into a timer and have it come on you know, early in the morning and go off late at night. Or you could just simply have it running all the time. Uh, but keep in mind, if you do that, you're gonna have it battling your, your uh, heater. But what I've done is I've got it set up on a uh, controller. I had some bulk reef supply points available to me. So I bought the uh, Digital Aquatics Reef Keeper Lite Basic. Uh, I ended up spending less than $30 on this unit. I've got the, uh, uh, the power plugged into outlet four, and I have it set to turn on my fan whenever the temperature reaches 79 degrees, and it'll turn off when it reaches 78.5 degrees. So it's as simple as that. Um, I mean, you don't have to have a controller. Just throwing that out there, guys. And also, I want to show you the rate of evaporation that I've experienced since Saturday. Now, Saturday, I had the water topped off all the way to here and it is now Monday, so in, in uh, two days, I've lost probably a half a gallon of water. Not that bad, you know, considering the cost effectiveness of evaporative cooling. And, uh, you know, it just may be for you guys, it's a very cost effective and efficient way to cool down your aquarium. Well guys, as always, thank you for watching. Everybody take care.